Hey guys, welcome back to another Witchbrook video where we're going to be breaking down the developer's document. This is part two. So we're going to be going over gameplay and stuff like that in this video. So let's continue on and just jump straight to it. Interacting with the world. The player can interact with the world in two main ways. Simple interactions, which require a single button press and complex interactions that require the player to activate a targeting system. Simple interactions, these are tar interactions that require nothing more than the player to approach an entity and press a button. Example, opening a door, talking to NPCs, you kind of get the gist there. Targeting mode. Interactive entities that require a more complex interaction from the player are marked with an icon that indicates to the player that they'll enter targeting mode. Targeting mode opens up a unique interaction user interface that allows the player to inter interact with entities in a large variety of ways, often leading to unexpected results. Once launched, the targeting mode allows players to choose a target in the environment, relates to the entity or activity, the launch targeting mode system, then choose from a list of tar categorized action spells, items, tools to apply to that target. The best way to break it down is pretty much like a JRPG, uh, like Final Fantasy, things like that. You see, you go to interact with the water here in this photo. Uh, you go down a tool and then you can, you know, pick your tools, fishing rod, and then use that action to pick through and interact with the world. It's pretty much what it's breaking it down to. Much of the joy of this system is interacting with the targets in surprising ways using unexpected options. For example, the player may choose flirt and receive a message. The shadows wiggles back happily. The fish may then become easier to catch. Perhaps a small chance exists for the shadow to emerge from the water as a mermaid, should the player use the flirt command often. So they're trying to mix it up, have some fun with it, have some randomness with it. Uh, that's kind of that's kind of a neat idea to use this targeting system for, I think. Oof, big chunk here. After selecting a target, only actions with some interactions are available. Figuring out how to use all these available interactions and see all the available results, rewards should be a source of joy for the player. The targeting mode allows flexible interactions with all manner of entities in the world. Allowing tasks to be approached in creative and amusing ways, the system should constantly subvert user expectation, with the rules of the system itself shifting to amuse and delight the player. For example, the player needs to catch a speedy rabbit. To achieve this, the player must target the rabbit and use a cage item. However, the target disappears from the rabbit if the player doesn't choose the cage fast enough. The targeting mode should be used wherever possible to all the players to approach mundane situations magically. It ties into the majority of the available activities in the game. The following interactions are available within targeting mode. Now, before I get into that, I think that's pretty cool that they're doing that. Uh, sorry, I know it's long, but to have like in-game time going. So when you go into the targeting mode, there's, you know, your time for certain things, like things are still going to be happening. Uh, you have to be quick about it sometimes. I think that's pretty cool that they're doing that and they're going for like the randomness, the amusing things, the, the little small, funny comical stuff i think that's really cool uh, i'm looking forward to that being implemented and can't wait to see the finished product of that either. actions contain a list of everyday actions that require neither items nor magic example flirt poke skull these actions are unlocked at the start of the game spells taught in classes and are unlocked by completing main quests spells often allow for new interactions or progress to be made in distraction activities that's cool, so they're gonna be implemented in like stuff like forging and stuff. Items are consumable. Items are crafted, found, or created through various side activities. Tools are reusable items, unlocked through various side activities. The players start with a wand. Tools are upgradable, and various interactions may only be successful if the tool is upgraded. That seems kind of cool. Um, I wish they, I'm, I'm hoping that it's more like a tier, kind of like how they have in Stardew, you know, where you have your regular, then, you know, it goes up to like 
iron or, you know, silver, gold, stuff like that. That'd be kind of cool. But then the Witcher's Grimmer, players are able to assign uh, interactions to one of four quick slots. Interactions assigned to a slot can be used on a target by pushing certain buttons on the keyboard or gamepad. If the assigned interaction is unusable on the given target, negative audio cue is played and there is no result. Distractions. Fishing. When the player approaches one of the mini game's fishing spots, they are able to access targeting mode and target various fish-like shadows in the water. Once a target is chosen, the player can use the fishing rod tool in order to launch a fishing mini game and catch a fish. The mini game places a fish icon on a horizontal bar. The fish will attempt to swim to the ends of the bar, and the player must pull the fish back towards the center of the bar. Should they hold the fish steady for long enough, the fish item is caught. Sounds pretty familiar. The item fish available depends on the fishing spot the player attends and the rarity of the fish. Some fish might require the player cast a particular spell on the shadow. Fish and other obtainable items can be collected and used in various other activities as well as collected in the school library, which I would assume would be kind of like the museum in Stardew, something like that, which is pretty cool, or maybe Animal Crossing. Forging. Forging is one of the few distractions that only requires simple interactions to complete. The player approaches a tree, plant, flower, etc., and presses a button, receiving an item in the process. Sometimes the item a player receives might be unclear. For example, a player may shake a tree and see what falls out. Here, a range of, a, a range of items are available, and some rarer than others. This gotcha style of forging should add excitement to the process. Forging entities in two types, reusable and single use. Reusable entities, trees, can be forged once a day. Single use entities, flowers, can only be forged the once but will reappear or regrow often in a different spot. Artifact hunting. Artifact hunting happens throughout the game world. Artifacts are a high value item that can be found in a number of different ways, even through undertaking other distractions. Artifacts are protected by powerful magic, and when found, the player must complete a puzzle to take ownership of the artifact. Artifacts enter the player's tools menu for use in targeting mode and can be registered at the library to complete the library artifact collection. I mean, part of that sounds familiar, but I like the little twist that they're doing with it. You gotta do like a little puzzle with a spell, a certain spell in order to do it, which is pretty cool. So we're gonna start the video about here. Uh, the next topic, gardening, goes on for quite a while. And I wanna try to keep these videos about close to 10 minutes as possible. I don't wanna drag it on too long. I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, talk to me in the comments about you guys' thoughts about, you know, what we went over in this video or your thoughts about the game i hope you guys are excited about this game as i am um yeah subscribe for more content like i like uh this is you know part two so they're gonna be a multi-part we're gonna break down this entire document and then of course i'm gonna be going over uh news for which broke as soon as this information is released so uh subscribe for more i appreciate you guys and i can't wait to see you guys in the next one it's a wrap.